Hello and welcome. The goal of this podcast is to get listeners connected with others in the sports industry because they say it's all about who you know and now you know us. All right, hello and welcome everybody. This is your host Connor Shank and you're listening to the Constant Sports Podcast. This podcast is committed to connecting you with other sports business professionals because they say it's all about who you know and now you know Brandon Duenas. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Brandon. Appreciate you having me on. Good to be here. Of course, of course. And so Brandon, a uh, local Phoenix resident himself, he is the vice president of communications for the Arizona Rattlers. He's been doing that for a few years and uh, got his uh, bachelor's degree in sports management also at Grand Canyon. So he's well uh, versed in the sports industry, sports sector. So we're excited to talk to him today about you know media relations, sports communication, journalism, podcasts. Uh, he's got his own podcast over there. So we'll touch on all that. So um, we'll just dive right in here. Brandon, so why why did you get into the sports industry? What was it about the sports industry that you said I want to go down that as a career path? Yeah, so sports have always been my passion uh, since just as far as I can remember. It's been a part of my life. Uh, grew up an Arizona sports fan. Played basketball pretty much my whole life. Played a little bit of college basketball as well. Uh, and then there came a day when I realized I was not going to make it to the NBA. So that's that's <laughs> kind of when I wanted to to focus more on the, the sports uh, business side of things. And it's always been something I've thought about uh, a little bit, like just in high school and all that. And then once I hit college, it was a no brainer for me to just kind of dive into that field and and try to build a career around that. So for me, it was just always been a passion and it just felt like kind of a no brainer for that. Uh, this is where I was going to end up. It was just a matter of getting there, which is yeah. uh, not easy. I will say that. Right. Right. Yeah. The journey is that's the, that's the hardest part there. And so is that, you know, one of the main reasons why you chose Grand Canyon, specifically the, the program you chose? Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, Jerry Colangelo being there and just some of the resources there, um, you know, their sports business program is is one of the best uh, in the country. So de- definitely uh, had, a, had a pretty big impact on that decision for sure. Yeah, no doubt. And then a lot of the listeners and viewers are in the either undergraduate sports management, sports business space. So were there certain classes mm-hmm. or certain, you know, maybe uh, coursework that you, you know, that you took that you're like, okay, this is beneficial and that you've seen using your career. Yeah. I think there's definitely some, some coursework that can help and like some examples, uh, that apply to like real life things that I've, I've already had to apply. But, uh, I think for the most part, like just trying to learn outside of class and outside of your courses, whether it's YouTube, whether it's reading, whether it's trying to stay, stay up to date on trends, like that's kind of where I've, found the most value, um, not, not to belittle a, a degree because it's definitely, definitely important, but I, I think there's, uh, if you can take learning seriously, that that's where you can get a lot of value. And that's, that's for me, I've always just tried to learn as much as I can. Because like, the more you learn, the more you can put your own twist on it and create your own ideas. So I, I just really try to stay, um, up to date with whatever's happening. So for me, it's a little bit of, uh, having that ability to, to be book smart and also street yep. smart, uh, combining that in the sports world. That, that's yep. what I try to do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of a hybrid model, right? You, you gotta, you know, yeah. kind of learn here, but then also implementing it and, you know, meeting those people doing the, the things outside of class are also just as important exactly. and, um, staying kind of in the education vein, learning vein here. So you have a few license and certifications with the NBA GM and scouting fundamentals of media relations. What were those, were those something that your employers were like, Hey, you got to get these, or did you just feel like these might, you know, help me in my career? No, I just went out and did those on, on my own. Um, just, you know, the, the GM and scouting I thought was just interesting because like the NBA has kind of always been growing up where I wanted to work. Uh, the, the Suns are my, my team. So I thought that course was very helpful. There's a lot of uh, hands-on approach that they they did there and some some really good uh, reading recommendations that that I got from them as well that I think can apply to, to anyone looking to get in sports. Um, so I kind of did that on my own. And then the, the media relations course was just more of just trying to get better at what I do and, and see if there's anything, you know, going back to the, to the basics that, uh, you know, that you can forget after X amount of years of graduating. So uh, for me, it's just trying to stay sharp, honestly. And I, I recommend everyone, whether it doesn't have to be a paid certification or anything, like, like I said before, you could watch a YouTube tutorial, you could go read a book. Like there's, there's so many different ways you can, you can try to, to master whatever you're trying to, to focus on. So that's, that was my goal there. Got it. And then as, as, um, as you've kind of been learning and growing in your position, you've been with the the Rattlers for three years now. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Going so, on to season three here. So excited. Uh, 
get started. Yeah. Perfect. And so kind of talk to the listeners and viewers how you could, because before that you were kind of like a staff writer, media coordinator, uh, marketing coordinator, those types of roles. Mm-hmm. So what was it about kind of seemed like maybe, maybe not a career shift, maybe that's um, over dramatic there, but how did you kind of move over into this field uh, with, with the Rattlers? Yeah. So I think, uh, like I said before, it's, it's tough to, to get into sports. Like there's a uh, full time, there's not a lot of positions and, uh, the ones that do get filled usually stay filled or get hired from like just internally, um, a lot of the time. So for, for me, it was just trying to stay consistent with, uh, starting out like my side hustles and, you know, my, I started my own sports blog, my own sports, uh, Twitter account that paired with that, which we can get into a little bit later with, uh-huh. um, but, but doing that in addition to like the marketing jobs that I had and, and some of those were actually had loose connections to sports too, that kind of helped. Uh, I try to take absorb as much information as I can in those uh, with those connections and and really just uh, in the back of my mind I knew this is where I always wanted to end up so just uh, trying to create my own path that's that's kind of the key for anyone that's like struggling to find a job in, in sports um, you could still work another job and just in your free time if you really dedicate if you really want it like you can go out there and you can definitely put the time in uh, in your free time and just try to keep building your resume and, and just keep knocking on the door and eventually. Uh, you know, it's, it all it takes is one one interview, and and then all of a sudden you're you're in sports. So, yeah, no, that was awesome. Appreciate that. And then we'll touch on the yeah. the uh, kind of side hustles as you as you coined there a little bit with. Uh, so you had Zona Hoops, and then you kind of mm-hmm. do the podcast. Now that is that kind of converted into one, or is those two others two separate? So Zona Hoops was kind of my own uh, thing I did just in terms of trying to build like a. It started off as like a social, it was just on Twitter, just trying to build like a following on there and covering the NBA and kind of started to gain a following. So I, I made it turn into a blog and then from there just built that out. But the, the podcast came in result of that in terms of being invited to be a co-host on there was through the connection I made from starting that and getting into the Suns community. So it was kind of a domino effect, I would say, where they're they're not connected, but they, they are definitely connected. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, you have no doubt. And then talk to the listeners and viewers a little bit about the the DraftKings deal that you sourced and kind of procured through mm. through that through that whole thing it's a very cool story yeah so this is a little unorthodox um i so like i said i started this this site and it was it was starting to do pretty well and it definitely didn't happen overnight there was the first 6 months i was getting you know like maybe one or two people a day consistently on my website and then all of a sudden you just see a boom and and then from there just use that momentum to grow it and uh, a certain point, it's just getting organic traffic and and then everything I'm doing on Twitter to help push content and uh, DraftKings actually reached, this is right before, just to rewind, like right before sports gambling became legalized in Arizona. And I remember getting an email from DraftKings, they actually reached out to me oh, and yeah. said, like they were just checking in to see if I was interested in a partnership and then just had a few interviews with them, some meetings and very long process to get a license Uh 100 page documents that I can't even remember some of the <laughs> stuff I had to like put on there. It was, it was, it was a process, but it was definitely awesome. And, and just kind of uh, helped solidify the the progress I made on, on the site and just use that momentum to, to keep growing. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I saw that um, kind of online. I'm like, man, it's a very cool story. So that's, yeah. it just kind of goes to show, as you've been mentioning, you just kind of keep knocking away, keep chipping away and, you know, things kind of fall in place and one mm-hmm. domino leads to another. So is there, is there kind of another, maybe story or another career um, kind of journey that you've had similar to that story with, with the Rattlers that you've seen uh, that off the top of your head. I know that's, I, I haven't prepped you for that one, but it just kind of came to me. Um, Nothing too particular. I would say just like in terms of trying to create new ideas, I, I could definitely see some parallels to like the experience of creating that um, just creating new content and trying new ideas, just seeing what works and what doesn't like we've had some really, successful like uh theme nights or just doing like cool like social media ideas or mm-hmm. our tiktok account actually when i took over had zero followers and <laughs> now it's it's doing pretty well so that's uh, that was another thing that I, I try to get us on and this was uh you know back in early 2022 and just seeing like the growth from it from there in that short amount of time is awesome so yeah it's definitely a there's definitely a lot of stories I could probably think of if I had a little more time, but off the top of my head, that was the first one that stands out. Yeah, and no, I appreciate that. And then uh, talk to to the viewers here about 
you know, your role now is VP of communications for the Rattlers. So what is, mm. you know, a day to day look like? What is the kind of a week look like? How do you prep those types of things, um, you know, for the viewers? Yeah. So every day is, is different, which, which I love. Uh, and sports is kind of like that where obviously you have a structure, like, you know, I, I try to keep a, a content schedule and to-do lists and all this stuff to stay organized, but you never know what's going to happen. So, uh, but typically I, I just oversee the the media department. So all of our media staff, uh, interns, man, like help manage the social media content, uh, make sure the website administration's uh, up to date on everything, dealing with sponsors, um, press releases, staying in touch with, with the news outlets, making sure we're getting coverage at practices, games, and and dealing with media row and all that, and and then post game press conferences. So it's it's kind of definitely a wide range of uh, that we touch on. Uh, mm -hmm. And in the media industry, there's especially for you know we're not like the the Suns or D-backs where we have departments for for every single right. thing we do. It's kind of like we're we're all, all hands on deck, which which is awesome because it's kind of helped me learn a lot more about the industry than I would if I just focus on one specific area. So I love that part of it. Right. Yeah. It seems like you can wear a lot of hats and kind of dip your toes mm -hmm. in a lot of different, different facets of the business. So as just a sure. curiosity for, on the media side, do you, does the team, you know, let certain players in or have you ever had a time where like one player's like, no, I'm not talking to the media today. And then you have to go find another one or kind of, I've always wondered that, what that looks like behind the scenes. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a, especially when it's uh it's like gets 110 out sometimes and we'll, you know the things are are hot out here in the summer during season so there's there's players ready to go home and, and not do interviews so but no our, our guys are great though honestly like we, we have a great group and there's not been uh there's been some eye rolls and stuff like that but certain interviews but then at the end of the day they all realize the more media coverage we get as a team helps them and then obviously like on an individual level like they're getting coverage and to help further their careers. So, so yeah, I think the media has been awesome to work with uh, here in Arizona. There's, you know, there's, we've had probably our best media turnout this year and just trying to build off that momentum because competing with the Suns, D-backs, uh, Cardinals, Mercury, Arizona State, uh, Grand Canyon, like there's just concerts going on all the time. There's oh, yeah. just so much going on here. It's, it's definitely a competitive market. So I, I like that challenge though. And then, so now the season starts here in a few months. So, uh, I would assume mm -hmm. that your schedule kind of ramps up a little bit between in season and out of season. So is there um, much of a difference if, if at any, or is it real, really night and day once in season versus out of season? Yeah. Off season, there's still uh, a decent amount of work to be done. Like there's a lot of follow-ups with, with, uh, with sponsors, making sure we're, you know, doing player signings, keeping in touch mm -hmm. with the fans. There's still work to be done for sure, but uh, nothing compares to the season. It's, it's a whirlwind for sure. And, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I will say it's, it's definitely gets pretty busy, but that's where time management comes into play and just making sure you're, you're on top of everything. And, um, I think, you know, just from my first season to now, just kind of have getting a system in place, like just making sure you're as efficient as possible. That's, that's the main thing for me. So I, yeah, just trying to stay as efficient as you can on those busy days and, and get ahead of schedule on things. That's, uh, but yeah, it's definitely a grind. Right. Yeah. No. And then staying on that note uh kind of with, with the time management and efficiency are there certain mm -hmm. kind of checks and balances are you a calendar type of guy do you, you do notes kind of what keeps you on tasks and, and on for because i feel like time management is a hard uh i, I mean i guess it's a skill it's a harder skill to kind of uh lock down so what is it that you do to keep uh keep dialed in oh yeah it's, it's definitely a skill I've, I've learned that the hard way uh <laughs> early in my career but yeah no i think just staying on top of your content schedule and um for me i have i like to write down notes too and like mm -hmm. that helps making like little check boxes like trying to knock out the biggest projects whether it's like that day or that week whatever it is and just make sure you get those done as soon as you can that way everything else like if something does drop on you unexpectedly you're just kind of ready uh for that because there's always uh, you, you never know what's going to happen in, in sports it could be a very calm wednesday or it could be <laughs> all hands on deck and uh, just trying to figure, you know, problems out. So, you know, just trying to give yourself that leeway and uh, stay as organized as possible. That's, that's definitely something I think that could help anyone in, in any profession really. Yep. No, I'm with you there. And then as, along with, uh, you know, maybe some skills that are essential, I would consider time management being, being on the top of the list, especially in the sports industry. So <laughs> yeah. that's, that's for sure. Um, and then is uh, we've talked a little bit about of kind of staying informed and, uh, within the sports industry, are you on? I know you obviously you have your own blogs and websites and whatnot, but are there other, you know, maybe sources of content that you you keep up to date with? Like, okay, 
Um, this is kind of what's happening in the sports world that the viewers and listeners can uh, check out. Yeah, so I know front office sports does a really good job of keeping you up, up to date with either trends or you know business ideas in sports, and uh, obviously just trying to stay as involved as I can on LinkedIn uh, with my network and and just looking for different things on there and Twitter as well is, is definitely kind of like the the modern day news where you're just trying to see what what's out there, like what ideas you can take and apply. So for me, it's like there's not really one place; it's just kind of a accumulation of making sure you're you're up to date uh, across the board and just, you know, you could do simple Google search on like whatever you're looking for to, to stay up to date on for that date and just go to, go to latest or most recent and just do some reading for, so for me, it's just like doing a lot of reading and, and just trying to stay involved with whatever's trending at that, that point in time. So you're not behind the curve. So right. that's, that's what I try to do. Yeah, especially in the sports world that can move, uh, you know, yeah. rather quickly as far as the trends and topics and things of that nature. And, um, I, I guess I was curious if you were to go back a few years in your career, four or five years, what have you, if, um, you know, we mentioned earlier about just kind of, you know, if, if you don't work in sports, you're trying to work in sports, you work, you know, at Dick Sporting Goods or something, whatever, you're doing something mm-hmm. on the side. Um, would you recommend maybe, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, like if they're trying to promote or maybe like you said, write a blog, is there a one over the other? Or do you, um, what do you think? Um, I think it's more about relationship building than it is which network you're on. So like it, for me, like on Twitter specifically, I just try to be as authentic as I could. And and um, the best way to phrase it is like, you have to offer value to other people. Uh, is, you know, people are not going to just reach out to you and or like respond to you because they think they'll get hundreds of emails or messages. And if it's all about you when you're talking to them, then they're more likely to ignore it. And it's not personal. It's just they have so much going on. But if you could stand out and really just try to build an authentic relationship without trying to ask for something or expecting anything in return um, and try to help them out or, you know, interview them or just ask them like about themselves. Like that's what I did on Twitter with a lot of reporters or uh, things like that. And that helped me a lot with just establishing relationships. So I think um, as long as you're, you're coming from a good place and you keep reaching out and uh, I think good things will happen. So it's the network for me doesn't really, hasn't really made a difference. It's more just Mm -hmm. about uh, my relationship with that person. So Right. Yep. Relationship building and kind of building that trust, uh, you know, two way street type of yep. deal. And then uh, as you've, you know, worked in the in the industry for a while now, has there been a favorite project or something that you've worked on that that uh, you were ha- have been most excited about that you're kind of proud of? Yeah. So uh, last year was actually our 30th season of Rattlers football. And we did like a whole campaign. It was called Decades of Dominance. Uh, you know, just kind of highlighting our, our past. And, and we had a cool like little logo reveal with like the, the 30 logo and had some merch and some other fun projects with that so that that was really cool to kind of see that come to life and we got i actually got to interview jerry colangelo who was the oh, cool. original owner of, of the rattlers and yeah. did like a quick like 20 minute sit down with them that, that was awesome um and just interviewing like past players and stuff like that too it was really cool to learn more about the history and just uh more about like our organization so that that part of it was definitely uh by far one of the coolest projects i've been a part of yeah no that sounds uh sounds very cool and i i got a little dose of that um i spent the past few years in arizona so it was cool to see out there uh you know out there and uh making its waves and i guess what um what might be the hardest part of your job or i guess uh some tasks that you might do that the listeners and viewers might not be fully aware of as they're not maybe not yet in the sports industry Um, I think just the amount of communication required, at least for this role is, is like people have no idea how, like you're getting hundreds of texts, emails, and calls a day, sometimes on game days and game weeks leading up to the game day. So it's, it's like, you have to be able to, to manage that. And, uh, it's, it's definitely a lot. So just, like I said before, time management is huge and, and making sure you're, you're trying to get everyone on the same page, uh, and communicate as clearly as possible. So, um, if you don't like your phone blown up or your email <laughs> blown up, then don't don't do uh, sports media because it's it's definitely something that will happen. And uh, on a daily basis, it's 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 uh, it can be tough at times for sure, but uh, it's it's a part of the job. So it's you know as VP of communications, you, you got to be good at communication. So. <laughs> I was just gonna say it's kind of in the title, so you can't exactly you, know, you can't <laughs> suck at communicating and then and then be in that role. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's funny there. And then I kind of want to get your opinion, maybe some thoughts uh, where you see the sports media, specifically in industry going in the next three to five years, whether that's streaming, you know, maybe we're cutting back and everyone's going back to cable or kind of what's your thought on uh, on the sports media landscape? Yeah, no, I think just the, the streaming deals in general, like you just look at some of the uh, there's like new platforms like playback and, and stuff like that, where it's like team, like people are trying to get as more as intimate as possible with, with fans and they want to offer different experiences because you have to stand out. If you don't like you're already seeing cable kind of die, like obviously mm-hmm. the, the uh, dinosaur cable networks that have been around right. forever, like those are probably not going to die anytime soon. But as, as far as like uh, just in trying to stay competitive on cable, it's just, they're, they're falling further and further behind. So that's, that's one example. And, I think just uh, all this technology coming out, like the the game's going to change, especially on the social media side of things. So uh, for anyone trying to get in that side of things, just trying to stay as up to date as you can on what's, what's happening and and just learn uh, as soon as you can. That's, that's, that's the main thing. If you can make yourself a valuable asset and and learn these new skills that are coming out and and learn how to use AI and, and uh, you know, chat GPT and all this, this stuff, like if you can get ahead of that, like, I think that's definitely another area where, there's going to be certain jobs where that'll just focus on that. And like, uh, because you look at like TikTok, there's, there's some teams that'll hire just one person to like run their TikTok account and stuff like that. So that, I don't know. And you would never dream of that like five years exactly. ago. So that's, that's just kind of the the directions that you new rules are always going to be opening mm-hmm. with the more technology there is. So just trying to stay as up to date on that as possible, if that's what you're, you're going for. Yeah. No. That, and that kind of, maybe think a little bit about um, as, as the Rattlers continue to grow their social presence, are there other, you know, avenues that, that you guys have been looking at other than TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter? Yeah. So we, we've definitely had some discussions for sure of uh, trying to get involved with like Twitch, um, doing some, some, like some lives um, on games and, and stuff like that. And there's definitely some, some ideas we're, we're trying to throw around and, uh, even just like in the pregame, just going on Facebook Live and just having someone just kind of show like the warm ups, stuff like that. Uh, just trying to make it as like interactive and behind the scenes as possible for fans on on game days. So uh, we've done that. And th- this year, I really want to try to emphasize that and just give our fans the best uh, behind the scenes access they can possibly have. Yeah, that's no, cool. And I, I think the the live stuff is kind of gives the viewers and, you know, kids and everything they want to be, you know, pro football players. It's like, oh, look at this, you know, kind of makes you feel like, you're on the field and connected with everybody. So the, um, yeah. that, that's very cool. It's smart, smart on, uh, on your end there. So I uh, just, just wrapping up here, Brandon, thanks for joining us today and kind of sharing your thoughts and uh, business acumen in the sports sector. So I usually like to give the, the guests uh, the floor at the end and you can plug in your podcasts, Twitters, whatever, um, you know, where to find you, how to connect. Um, so yeah, the floor is yours. Yeah. I guess the last thing I'll say is for anyone that's, trying to get a job in sports and discouraged, like just, I used to be in your shoes, like hundred percent. So I can directly say this, like, just keep, just put your head down, do the work. And, and there's no shortcuts. That's the other thing is like, you have to put in the work. Um, but if you, if you do that, I think uh, good things will happen. Good things will follow. And like, you, you just gotta, uh, like I said before, just kind of embrace learning too. That's, that's another thing for me is like, just, just make sure you're, you're not falling behind and, mm-hmm. and uh, just try to stay as connected as possible. But, but yeah, I guess you could you could find me uh, on Twitter at AZ Sports Zone. I still have that that handle going uh, strong over there, and, mm-hmm. and chain, did a shift from Zona Hoops, which is no longer in existence. But uh, same deal over there. And then uh, yeah, just follow all the Arizona Rattlers social media platforms. Uh, yeah, just appreciate you having me on. It's, it's been fun. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and we'll we'll. Uh you know put all the tags and mentions in there and uh, maybe get have some uh some people get out there to some rattler games and you the schedule in the spring right kind of march is kind of when uh april that's the kickoff day and all that yeah yeah so we should get the schedule here pretty soon any any minute now honestly um, okay cool and as soon as that happens yeah we'll uh we'll definitely be blasting that everywhere so yeah usually like march uh beginning of march is like kind of when our season starts so perfect okay well Thanks. Uh, thanks again, Brandon, for joining us today and all the listeners and viewers. This has been another episode of the Constant Sports Podcast. And today you met Brandon and uh, we're looking forward to connect with future sports business professionals in the future. And you can find this episode, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple, anywhere you get your podcasts. And uh, we'll see you next Monday.